Look at the trend line here, and this is a perfectly parallel trend line right up here. And look at how you're just staying inside of this channel. At this point, we all know the approval's coming for the spot ETF, but the bigger question now is, does it get through 50,000? If the stock market really collapses, we could actually go as low, low as 10. We never really saw the stock market collapse, and, and therefore we started to look at the, the, the 30,000 level, 30, 35,000, break out above that. And I'm a trader, so, you know, you can be bullish in the short term, but you have to adjust that when chart levels are broken. And that's that's a good point that you're making on that. Welcome, Crypto Street Navigators. We're about to embark on a roller coaster ride through the exciting world of crypto. Look at that Bitcoin trend line. It's like the heartbeat of the crypto kingdom. It's dancing within this perfectly parallel channel, teasing us with its every move. Now, the burning question. Will it conquer the mighty 50,000 peaks, or are we in for a wild dip to the mysterious depths of 10? But fear not, our guide through these turbulent waters is none other than the crypto maestro, Gareth Soloway. Get ready for a mind-bending discussion as he unravels these crypto enigmas. We look at the Bitcoin chart. We had that kind of flush out yesterday. Bitcoin likes to do that on occasion because there's so many people using leverage. It can kind of just sweep out the leverage, take people's money that are keeping, you know, their, their liquidation prices are so close. But if we look at the chart very simply, and I love to keep charts simple here, Look at the trend line here, and this is a perfectly parallel trend line right up here. And look at how you're just staying inside of this channel. And the way I look at this is simple. If we break the high end of the channel around 46,200 or so, there's an upside target of 48,000 to, to 50,000. And I want to show you where I get that from. It's actually a really powerful level. Take, take the highest point from 2019, draw through the lows of the bull market cycle, and just extend that line out, right? And what we get is about 49,000, give or take, right through there. You also have a tent trend line right here that's a high pivot right there. Draw that out. Gives us about 48,400. And lastly, and by the way, as a technician, I'm always looking for a confluence of levels. So where do most of the levels convene together? We do a Fibonacci retrace from the bull market high to the lows of the bear market. And the 618 Fibonacci retrace is right there, right around 48 to 50,000. And so, in other words, that's going to be a major roadblock, right around 48 to 50. Um, whether or not we get this approval, I think at this point we all know the approval is coming for the spot ETF. But the bigger question now is, does it get through 50,000? If it can't, I do think there's a rejection where we actually could trade back to 30,000 at some point, which would be a retrace to the big breakout at that 30, 31,000 level. At this point, you know, basically I'm a buyer at 30,000 as support. If it breaks support, then I have to reevaluate. I think it goes back towards that 20,000 range. And then if 20 breaks, then you're looking at that low of 15 and change. Uh, so it's very level by level as a technician, and you just have to accept it. Like when a level, just like when 30,000, 31,000 broke, then you had to go bullish for a potential upside move. Max move is up to 48,000 or so, give or take. Um, and then again, if on the downside, we break this channel here, um, and again, I'll just pop up my charts one more time to show. So if we break below 41.4 or so on a daily closing basis, then you go to 38, which is right here. And then eventually you could retest 30, but, but I'll be trading it long and short all the way around. I mean, that's what a good trader does. And, and I'm able to make a lot more money than if I'm just a buy and, and hodler, essentially. Let's dive deeper into the infinite wisdom shared by Gareth Soloway, our crypto oracle. Yesterday's flush out in the Bitcoin chart might have left some scratching their heads, but fear not, Gareth simplifies it all. Picture this, the trend line, our digital compass, guiding us through the crypto labyrinth. Break the ceiling at 46,200, and suddenly we're on a rocket ride to 48,000 to 50,000. But where's he getting these numbers? It's a fusion of 2019's peak, bull market cycle lows, and a sprinkle of Fibonacci magic. Now if we can't crack that 50,000 vault, buckle up. We might just take a detour back to 30,000. Gareth, the trader extraordinaire, is strategizing, buying at support, and constantly reevaluating when the crypto seas get choppy. It's like navigating through a storm with a seasoned captain, and Gareth is our guide through these turbulent crypto waters. Oh, and that quick detour to the golden realms. Gareth unveils the cryptic patterns in the gold chart, unlocking the secrets that could influence our crypto kingdom. It's like finding hidden passages in a labyrinth, decoding the language of gold's movements to better navigate the crypto landscape. The markets have this dependency on getting positive results. So the market will tend, and this is when I say the market, I mean overall investors, hedge 
funds, all the rest of these, they need to see those returns. And so any sort of positive light at the end of the tunnel, they're going to spin into a narrative that is very, very positive. And I think that's what we've seen over the last 12 months, where it went from, oh my goodness, the Fed's hiking and hiking and hiking, and this is going to cause a really catastrophic situation, to now the Fed, we got that little ounce of the Fed pausing, maybe some rate cuts, and they're spinning it to be this miraculous um, you know, solution that's going to keep this economy and the stock market running. And and the one thing I would say is the market's expecting six to seven rate cuts in 2024. You have to ask yourself as an investor, as a logical, free-thinking investor, what has to happen to the economy for the Fed to cut six or seven times? And again, those don't mesh, right? So yes, the market wants lower interest rates, but to get that many cuts, the economy would have to fall off a cliff, in my opinion. Again, I don't think that's, I, I don't know about a cliff dive, but I don't think we're getting six to seven this year. I think we've priced that, you know, basically you saw the Fed minutes yesterday, the markets had another down day yesterday where we're covering a little bit from some downside today. But I think the markets, when we heard the Fed minutes come out yesterday, they were a little disappointed. They heard, again, three rate cuts next year. That's basically what the Fed is choreographing. Um, and that's no, that's underneath what the markets are pricing in. So there's this disparity. And we can kind of see that. Like if we bring up the 10-year year, and I'm going to bring on my chart here in just a second. But if we look at the 10-year yield, the 10-year yield is trading just around that 4% level, right? And so again, we've had this monster readjustment in expectations from 5% on the 10-year down to as low as 3.75, 3.78. Now we're back just underneath 4%. But if you look at where the Fed funds rate is at around 5.5%, and here the 10 years below 4, that's pricing in just alone there, six 25 basis point rate cuts. I do believe that, again, the market is overshooting to the downside and we are going to see rates move back up, probably back to around that 4.5%. So this this equilibrium where it's right around those three to four cuts that the Fed is pricing in, that's they're telling us, that's where interest rates probably have to adjust back to over the next couple months. We see the gold chart here. We continue to have kind of resistance around 2075. We've pierced it now pretty significantly. We had that one little pop up. Notice again that we really haven't closed above this level on a daily basis. So that's what you're looking for as a breakout tactic here. Now, one of the things that I do see, and I'll give you a price target here, and I'll show you exactly how I arrive at it, is that you do have an inverse head and shoulder pattern. And an inverse head and shoulder pattern is a bullish pattern on this chart. Again, you look at a bunch of these patterns, they tend to break out, and we can actually calculate out our target. So what we'll do here first is I want to draw on that head and shoulder so everyone can see and again, simply put, there's your right, uh, left shoulder, your head here, right up to that line. Here's your right shoulder, right? And so the idea is that if we break above this, this plays out. Now you might say, okay, well, how did we arrive at the target? And this is a great tactic for everyone to use at home when you find one of these patterns. Take the lowest point of the head and then draw a line straight up to the neckline. This is called the neckline, essentially upside down neckline of the human being, right? And you see it's about a $450 move. And so the idea is, is that you should do, once you break out, that $450 move should be replicated to the upside, which takes us to about 2500 and a quarter. So $2,500, $25 as a target price on uh, gold. And that, again, whether it's hit this year or early next, I don't know. But in general, you can see that each cycle, so each, each cycle pattern lasts about a year, right? About a year is each part. So it implies that in approximately a year, we should be around $2,500, which again, would be a tremendous return for gold. We haven't seen these type of returns in a year period in gold in a very, very long time. So the dollar, we did see it come for, you know, quite a drop from the highs, right? We were at 107 over here. And, and obviously the previous year in 2022, we topped out at 114. And so it looks to me like we're now making lower highs. And you can see, again, we came down here to this low trend line, which is a connector from this pivot to this pivot, and right there gave us the low on the dollar. We then retraced up to this point. But at this point, I'm really thinking that the dollar is going to be making lower lows and lower highs. So you're going to get bounces like we're seeing now. We could even bounce a little bit more. But I do think the dollar continues to kind of inch lower. The big level on the dollar to watch, and I'll give you guys the one to watch here, is this line here at 99 and change, right? So we could see we tested it in 2023 in February, or check that, in July, and that was this pivot. If that breaks, then you have something bigger in store for the U.S. dollar. But right now, we're still holding above that major pivot point, and so I would kind of remain negative overall, but expect bounces at key levels. Gareth Soloway.
returns with more financial thrillers to decode. The markets are like master storytellers, spinning narratives based on positive glimmers of hope. The Fed's stance with interest rates has everyone on edge, and the market's expectations are shooting for the stars with anticipated rate cuts. But Gareth raises an eyebrow. What kind of catastrophe needs six or seven cuts? It's like reading a suspenseful novel where the plot twists keep you on the edge of your seat. A peek into the 10-year yield and the gold chart reveals the market's tug of war. Gareth predicts not just a rebound in rates, but a bullish breakout for gold, painting a target of $2,525. The dollar? Well, it's doing a little dance, but Gareth thinks it's heading for lower lows and lower highs, and he's here to guide us through the financial saga. The Crypto Street roller coaster is far from over. Subscribe and like and join us as we navigate the twists and turns of the crypto universe together. The adventure continues, and we're your guides on this thrilling journey through the heart of Crypto Street.